Hi and welcome. Uh, this video is going to demonstrate creating a project in SI 2015 using the new project wizard. Um, there's multiple links throughout the software to start a project. There's one right here. Um, if you go up to the start menu, go to projects, you can start one here. You could go uh, to the project editor if you're viewing already viewing your projects and go to the new button and start a project. All of them are going to open up this uh, wizard here and uh, prompt you to enter information regarding the project. At a minimum, you have to fill in a client name and a project name in order to create a project file. So um, you can use the drop down to select an existing client or type in a new name here. Let's say it's XYZ Corp is the client. Uh, when you tab out of this box or click out of it, you'll be prompted to create the client. Choose yes. If you want to fill in any of this information here, you can. A uh, phone number for um, this company or a website and a main primary email. Or if you want to set uh, taxes for this, if this is a particular, uh, in an area where it's 8% versus 7% or something like that. Um, so we'll just skip over here to the addresses. Um, go ahead and enter an address if you know it. Um, the site address is a, the primary address that does print on most of the documentation throughout SI 2015, uh, the, the reports and so forth. So um, at least enter a site address. Uh, and of course, if the billing address is different, you could enter that as well. So uh, I'm just going to put something in here very quickly and go ahead and hit save. Um, so again, if you want to add multiple addresses, feel free. And uh, you're going to want to add at least one contact here. The contact field in the um, project is, is what actually prints on the proposal and, and reports that, that require signatures, um, not the client name, the contact name. So uh, definitely add at least one contact out here. And in this case, I'll say Mike Smith. Uh, you can give him a title. If you like who he is at this place, you know, is the owner. Uh, here you can enter information and phone number if you'd like. I'll do that. Oops. And uh, an email. At whatever .com. Go ahead and save. And then save and close the new client form. And you'll see that this field is now populated. And so is the contact information. Um, let's go ahead and enter a project name here. Just sample project. And uh, we'll go ahead and if you want to change your progress here, you can. Um, my list happens to have discovery in this, so I'm just going to switch this to estimating as a default. Uh, this is just you know, for internal communication within your company. Uh, when you're looking up projects, you can see the progress. Um, go ahead and click next. And uh, here's the address that I entered, the site address. The next step uh, is the billing address, which um, I did not um, enter out globally. So if you want to copy over the site address at this point, you can. Uh, this is your change address button here where you could just select the existing one if that if that's the case or you could you know hand type in a different address here uh, your next step would be if you want to apply a price rule to a project uh, this would be something along the lines of saying uh, for every product that I add take the existing price in the catalog um, and uh, subtract X percent off 10 percent off if you wanted to do that if you're um, trying to apply like a an overall global rule to the items that get added to a project. Um, you don't have to do this. Um, if you don't set a price rule here, uh, the items that are added to a project will just, again, take their existing price from your catalog, and then at that point you can pick and choose if you want to discount items or change the margin or, or price on them. So the next step is um, where you can enter your taxes. This is pulling the default from your control panel, um, but you have a, a drop down list here if you wanted to enter um, or change taxes. If you if you need to enter new ones, just go to manage taxes here and um, go through creating a, a new tax when necessary. The next step here is uh, who the project resources are. And it always defaults to whoever's logged in at this point in time. Um, here you could just add, you know, if there's a uh, engineer that's going to be working with the salesperson on this job or um, you know who the project manager is going to be. Uh, you don't have to do anything at this point with this step if you don't want to. Um, the primary use of resources really is later on when you're, um, if you're using our scheduling features for uh, tasks and service orders, that's when you would add some resources here like the installers or the technicians that you want to assign to those tasks. The next step here uh, is showing the primary 
contact that uh, we just created. And if you want to add additional contacts here, you can. Uh, this is a printable report out of the software for, uh, again, who outside of your company uh, is involved in this job. Like there might be an architect, a builder. Um, so you can always add a new one here or you could um, pull in um, from an existing contact list. So if you know you're gonna be working with an electrician on this, we'll, we'll add one here. Um, so you have a secondary uh, person in this list. And again, it's a report. The next step is where you can enter a scope of work. This is another client report in the software, kind of the uh, narrative of what you are gonna do on this job. Um, you could do this by system or um, personalize it per location. It's really up to you, but uh, again, a narrative of the job that can be part of your uh, uh, documentation that you present to your clients uh, with your proposal. So again, fill this in if you want to. The next step is where you're gonna enter the locations for a project, and the location being the physical place where the equipment is being installed. Uh, the add button here um, allows you to pull from a preset list that you can set up under uh, your control panel, uh, which would be just a list of common uh, room names, building names, floor names. Um, it's really up to you what you put in this list. So if we take a look here uh, at, at a stock list that's been slightly modified, there's um, certain groups out here like uh, there's buildings, there's floors, there's rooms. So um, what level you start at is going to be up to you. So you don't have to have a multi-level or you know locations with sub-locations uh, if it's a smaller job, but there are going to be jobs where you might want to identify it. Example being, let's say you're doing um, you know a boathouse, a guest house, and a main house. Uh, if this was a resi example, um, you might put the buildings first. You can put these in the order you want them in. And beneath this, we might then add sublocations for then floors and then a sublocation to that for rooms. Or we could go, uh, you know, directly beneath the main house, just list floors, uh, that being the ultimate location, just to identify the separate buildings on a job. Um, or you might just do floors and then um, rooms. It's really going to be up to you on how you want to present and stay organized. So just in this case, um, what I'll do is uh, show you entering one by hand. Um, so same options, newer location. This time you're just hand typing it. So um, I'm just going to say conference room and then, uh, you know, another new one. We'll say that there's going to be office one and then office two. So since I don't have these in the preset list, you can hand type these in the list. Um, but you may want to then consider going back to the control panel after this and then building a stock list here. Um, locations can be modified later within the job as well, like once you get a floor plan. But uh, you might want to get started here with uh, the areas you know you're going to be working in. Um, and go ahead and hit next. Uh, this is where you can define the systems for a project. So again, the ad is going to pull from a preset list from your control panel. The uh, new is going to allow you to hand type one. So here you can see a list of systems and you can pick and choose which ones um, apply to this pro particular project. So we'll just go through this uh, control system, AV system, um, security system. Those will be the three for this. Uh, go ahead and hit next. Uh, here you'll see your contract payments, the list. Again, this is pulling from the control panel and you can modify this per project if you'd like. Um, you can always modify this later as well, but if you know the payment schedule at this point in time, if, it, if it's different from this, go ahead and use the buttons up here to delete lines and uh, just make sure this column equals 100%. And then last but not least, any custom fields that you may have created. In this case, I don't have any defined. Um, just think of them as, um, again, custom fields. Use them for whatever you want. You can name them uh, here. Uh, these just are information within the project file that you can reference, um, or you could create you know, custom reports that pull these um, if, you, if you needed these fields for something else like that. Uh, when you're done, go ahead and click Save, and this is going to save the project and open the project editor interface. And now I'll give you a quick tour around uh, the interface here, um, mainly regarding the fields that we just filled in in that new project wizard. Um, if you need to... Um, modify most of the information. It'll be up here in the information button. Uh, pulls up this form here where you can see the, the client name, the contact here, uh, address tabs, resources, the additional contacts. Um, there's a notes field that you can um, start using if you'd like to keep notes on a project. 
and then here's the custom fields tab. Um, there's other uh, settings that did come in with this project, like um, the locations. You'll see them over here in the drop zone. So these are the locations that we entered, the systems that we entered. And you can manage these right here by clicking these buttons. Uh, you can also go to the settings tab. And up here we have uh, all of the settings that are uh, specific now to this project. Like for instance, if you needed to adjust the tax that was in that wizard, if you didn't do that before, you could do that here uh, now. Uh, let's go ahead and click locations, for example. And I'm gonna add another new location here and say that there's also an equipment closet that I want to account for and assign products to. So hit save and close. You can see that it's been added here to the list. And so, um, yeah, that's just the new project wizard and uh, how to create a project. Uh, we'll do a whole other video on actually adding products to this and generating reports, so check that out as well.